today, here just moments ago on this overcast fall afternoon in this sleepy agrarian town that sits alongside the interstate, Norman Bates was brought to justice. And so ends the most terrible and bizarre chapter in the history of this picture book town, and that of a young man whose poor mind, twisted and bent out of shape like a pretzel, tortured by self-loathing and guilt, plunged headlong into a world of dementia and darkness. There he is. Yes, folks, there he is, the infamous Norman Bates. Murderer, victim, you decide. Being led by his captors into a long, sleek black sedan that signals the end of one journey for Norman and the beginning of another. One that will take him away perhaps forever from this place that he was born, past Ivers Cutlery, where his mother used to send him to have her knives sharpened, and the Grant Hotel, where he worked after school and first showed an interest in motel management. A journey down a long road known as Justice, and off to his new home, the state mental institution at Dunsmore, where perhaps, just perhaps, Norman will come to understand the wrong that he has done, and through kindness and a lot of intensive analysis, will emerge from the darkness into the light. He's a tough one. I just can't seem to get through. Every time I try to talk to him, he just looks at me with those sad eyes. No brothers, sisters. Mother died when he was an infant. No relatives. Just a poor innocent at the mercy of a brutalizing stepfather. Hmm. Says he owned a dry cleaning store and would beat him and lock him in a large dryer. Till one day when the dad crawled inside to clean it and little Alex closed the door, pressed a button and dry cleaned him. You've had a rough time of it, haven't you, Alex? But Dr. Phillips and I, I'm Dr. Goodman, are going to try and change all that. But we need your help. How about interests, hobbies, friends? I, I didn't see anything in the file. Well, just Jack. Jack? His pet bird. What I got from neighbors is that it was his only friend until he returned home from school one day to find it dead. The stepfather? Handed him a shovel and ordered him to bury it. Instead, he secretly stuffed it. I see. You know what I think, Alex? I think you need a real friend. No, no. Besides Jack here. I mean a, a buddy. Someone to talk to. Someone to trust. But most importantly, someone who knows an awful lot about how to make sure that, that Jack here stays healthy and doesn't lose any of his stuffing. And so I took the small boy, so frightened and all alone, to meet Norman Bates. Over the course of the next 27 years, I was privileged. Yes, that's a good word for it, privileged to witness the growth of an extraordinary relationship. One as strong and healthy as I've ever seen. Their insights, sensitivity, their wisdom that was almost a sixth sense, and frankly at times frightened me with its power. And through it all, it was always Norman, the father. The father that Alex never had. And Alex, what did Alex do for Norman? Well, as Norman told me many times in session, he saw Alex as himself when he was a boy and wanted to help him have a second chance. For you see, although Norman knew he would never regain his freedom, he lived with the hope that someday Alex would. Don is more mental institution personnel, doctors, Attendants, candy stripers, and fellow inmates. Although I did not have the privilege of knowing the deceased, I have been asked before cremation of his humble remains to say a few words. For all of us, no matter how mighty or how small, how powerful or how insignificant, how saintly or how sinful, are entitled to be ushered from this fragile world with its pains and its joys, its sadness and its heartbreak, 
up to the very gates of heaven. We're there. He will be judged. If there is no one who wishes to say a few words, I will uh, <clears throat> conclude with a final prayer. I do. I do. Uh, I'll try and keep it short. We do a volume business here. Norman Bates was my friend. To the world, he was a murderer. But to me, he was my friend. And I only hope that in your lifetimes, you will all be lucky enough to have one friend like him. Norman always said to me that if I wanted to get better, I could, but I would have to work at it, and it would be hard like being up here now. He said that people, no matter how bad they've been treated, have to try and forget, to forgive and, and try to get the hatred out of their hearts because it is hatred that is the enemy. And it doesn't make us feel any better. It just... eats us up inside. Alex. They really are pretty. There you go, Dr. Goodman. Alex, I have some good news for you. I have recommended to the board that you be released immediately. Just think of it. After 27 years, you're going to have your freedom. You fought your demons, and the world has said, you've won. I have no place to go. Sure you do. There's a whole world out there. Cities, towns, movies, gardens so big you can get lost in them. I think that's what I'm afraid of. Alex, you're gonna be okay. I know it. And remember, it's what Norman always wanted for you. Dr. Goodman, uh, this is the only place that I feel safe. This is where all my friends are. There is no place for me out there. I wouldn't fit in. I, Norman Bates, being of sound mind, to hereby declare this to be my last will and testament, and to hereby bequeath the following. To Mrs. Fisher, who taught me the art of cooking, my turkey. Thank you, Norman. To Mr. Yoki, who taught me how to dance the twist and the hucklebuck, my 45 record collection. That's a boy, Normie. And last but not least, to my dear friend Alex, on the condition that he, upon regaining his freedom, make it a great hostelry again a place where people can come to rest and find themselves in their journeys through life. The Bates Motel. Oh, well, Alex, now you have a place to go. Why not? I 
just can't. Alex, this was Norman's way of telling you it's time to go. It was his way of giving you a second chance. It's a great gift, Alex. Take it. Hey, Pilgrim, you look a little lost. Can we help you out? Oh, yes, please. Uh, I I'm looking for this bus. Yeah, yeah, search is over, Pilgrim. Stops right here. Thank you. Uh, Bates Motel. That's a nice looking place. It's not like these flea bags around here. Well, my friend Norman always kept it very clean. Well, maybe some time when we fix it all up, you gentlemen will come by for a visit, spend a night or two. Well, that's nice of you. Here, here, you want a slug? Yeah, it ain't. Oh, but it thanks. will keep you going. Hey, dude's been holding out on us. <laughs> Got some of that sacky here. Oh, that's not sacky. That's Norman. Norman, Schmorman, all the same to me. Oh, give that back. That's Norman. That's Norman's ashes. Or something? Yes, sir. Do you know where the Bates Motel is? Never heard of it. I'm new in the area, sorry. Uh, amigo, no, you, you don't entiendo. I'm new here. You don't entiendo. Tengo mucho trabajo ahorita, eh? Bueno, vemos. Just moved here myself. Sorry, I just moved here. No, I ain't heard no Yates Motel. Norman, I think I want to go back. Hi, welcome to Sly's Chicken. Well, sir, I'm waiting. Uh, yes, please, Bates Motel. Sorry, sir, but we only have crispy, our original recipe. Crispy? Very good. Now, will that be a single order or a party pack? Party pack? Thank you, sir. Oh, no, no, I, I'm sorry. I don't think you understand. I ate my lunch on the bus. I, I'm trying to find the Bates Motel. Look, I'm new here. Next car, please. 
Looks like you're having a bad day. Name's Henry Watson. I saw you drop this in that flower patch over there. Thank you very much. That's very considerate of you. Uh, look, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what's a young fella like you doing with a postcard from the old Bates Motel? You mean you've heard of it? Is it very far? No, about a half a mile. But the way they're ripping things down around here, it could be gone by lunchtime. Thank you very much. I'm Alex West. I I'm the new owner. I'm going to reopen the Bates Motel. Reopen? Bates? Yes. Is there something wrong with that? Let me drive you over. I'll tell you all about it. Ever since then, people around here believe it's haunted. They believe Mrs. Bates still lives in that house, and that she roams the grounds every night. Did you ever see her? Did you ever see her? Mm. I work for the old witch, you know, doing odd jobs and things. I knew Norman, too, ever since he was a kid. Yeah, poor thing. What that crazy woman did to him, always locking him up. I felt sorry for him. He used to play catch once in a while. He really liked that. But the problem was, the ball went through his hands every time. The truth is, little Norman wasn't much of an athlete. Yeah, it was a sad place, all right. Well, there it is. Bates Motel. Still sends shivers down my spine. Town council felt that way, too. That's why it's all boarded up. Thank you very much for the ride, Mr. Watson. Henry. All right, Henry. After all I told you, you still going in? I have to. It's my home. Well, Norman, we're finally home. And it's all here. 
Just like you said. How to get a loan, how to get a loan. Oh, here it is, page 57. Gentlemen, I'm Alex West, and I'm here to get some of your money. That's no good. Gentlemen, you're Alex West, you're here to... That can't be right. Ladies and gentlemen, how am I gonna do this? Okay, one more time. If you wanna be successful in securing that loan, relax. Be confident. Take a deep breath. Directly in the eye. Don't forget to breathe. Gentlemen, I'm Alex West, and I need your help. Don't fidget. Don't be nervous. Just relax. You are dressed for success. How can I help you? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Fuller. Tom, stop. A friendly bank has friendly people, or it doesn't work. Boy, this is going to be a lot easier than I thought. OK, uh, Tom, as you can see, I now own the Bates Motel. And a prime piece of real estate it is, too. Speculators trying to uh, get their hands on that for years. Well, I thought perhaps I could get a loan. A loan, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, Tom. Uh, but it wouldn't be for a lot. I figured it was just a matter of time before some hotshot developer like yourself made a killing. It's quite a coup. Quite a coup. Now, uh, what are we talking? 10, 20 million for a condo complex? Condo complex. Oh, sure, now I get it. You're afraid of oversaturation? You want to go with single-family dwellings? That's smart, That's sensible. Well, no, not exactly, Tom. I wasn't thinking quite that big. Um, actually, just enough to fix it up, like uh, get it running again, you know? Um, let me get this straight. Uh, you're not going to level the place? No. Just uh, slap on a few coats of paint, maybe a new roof, have yourself a... Small little motel business, then. Well, actually, I thought we could add on a little cafe, maybe put a fountain out front. Fountain? <laughs> if you don't mind my saying it, from strictly a business point of view, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Alex, that property is worth a fortune. 
Good. Wonderful. So, could I have the loan? <sighs> Alex, Alex. That's not the point. Uh, for a development, yes. Even a hell spa. But uh, to reopen the baits? Tom, uh, Norman left it to me. We were friends. And uh, I just have to make it into a great place again. I just have to. Please, Tom. I need your help. I'll tell you what I'll do. You have your architect and your contractor send me an estimate, and uh, I'll do what I can to push it through. How's that? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. You move. Who are you? Who am I? The better question is, who are you? Give me that. Don't you get smarter, I'll brain you with it. Now I want some answers, and this had better be good. I'm Alex West. I live here. Oh, you do, huh? Into the kitchen. No funny business. months now. If I'd wanted a roommate, I'd have just put an ad in the paper. Straighten your tie. Can't stand sloppy people in my house. What are you doing here? I'm the new owner. You. The owner. Of what? Of, of, the, of this motel. Ah, oh, sure you are. Yeah. Who's this Norman Bates character? He was the previous owner. He left this to me in his will. See, that's my name under his Alex West. I can read, I can read. Okay. So you're the owner. Big deal. Now what? Do you think you could put that down? Please. One false move. Your memory. Look, I'm really hungry, and uh, I'd be more than happy to share my dinner with you. W would you like to have something to eat? Sure. 
Why not? After I got rid of that jerk, I said goodbye to my parents and hitched across country. So let me tell you, the only one you can depend on in life is yourself. It's been great. Got lots of friends. Everybody wants me to stay with them. But you got to be independent. They'll just chew you up alive out there. Hey, I, I got everything where I want it. The acting career is just starting to take off. What do you think they're going to say when they see this face on the cover of Time magazine? That they should have had more faith. Damn right! Hey, you're not much of a conversationalist, but I get this feeling, right, that you understand a whole lot of things. teach you to express yourself a little more. I mean, these strong, silent types, they might have been okay in that place you were in, but out here, you gotta speak up. We're never gonna get this place rebuilt. Willie? Really? No, forget it. No thanks necessary. I'll be glad to stay on, help you over the hurdles, keep them fast talkers from ripping you off. It's nothing personal, but this is something that I have to do for myself. Of course you do. I'm going to be right here to make sure nobody stands in your way. No, <laughs> you don't understand. I mean, all by myself. Oh, yeah, I get it. Why don't you just say it in the first place, huh? Don't you see that I got places I could go? Things to do? Willie, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just think it would be better this way. I'll be gone in the morning. No problem. Total facelift. Make it more congruous with the surrounding architecture. Like this shopping center I designed. Mission tile, plenty of glass. Oh, it's, it's a great look. Mm, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I'm just not so sure that Norman would have wanted me to change things that much. Uh -huh. Well, with all due respect to this prior owner of yours, the area has gone through a bit of a change in the last 25 years. And frankly, I think this place cries out for a little more fun in the sun. Fun in the sun? For instance, that awful house. Oh, Norman grew up in that house. Flatten it. Put in a lap pool. A lap pool? Yeah, and a jacuzzi, too. A jacuzzi, too? Along with a few more shuffleboard courts. Why not? A successful motel today has to offer a whole range of facilities, or else you just can't compete. You're the architect. Yeah, but you're the customer. And the customer is always right. Isn't that correct? Generally, yes. Told you. Just couldn't bring myself to leave you at the mercy of every rip-off artist in town. Would you mind telling me just who this young lady is? I'm not a young lady, OK? I'm Mr. West's design consultant. And I'm here to make sure that nobody, for lack of a more elegant term, picks his pockets. Would you excuse us for one minute, please? That's my architect you're talking to like that. Wrong, Alex. That is a guy who wants his monument to go up with your money, whatever it costs. That's not fair. No, I heard what he said. Level this, shuffleboard that. By the time he got finished, this place will look like a retirement home, and I'm going to tell him. Oh, no, you're not. Now, this is my place, my place, Willie. Besides, I thought you left. Well, what'd you think I was? Some fair-weather friend who deserts you just when you needed her the most? Couldn't do that, Alex. For your sake, not mine. You're a babe in the woods. 
A mere guppy in a tank full of sharks. And I'm not gonna stand by and watch him turn you into a weenie. Would you please keep your voice down? Believe me, that kind does not offend. Willie, I'm asking you. Okay. But just for you. Him? Don't. Really, we could do this better ourselves. Don't go in there. Who are you and what do you want? I'm Alex West. West, I'm here to see Mr. Watson. I must advise you. He might be armed and dangerous. Pay no attention, Alex. The door is open. Morning, Alex. What's going on? I've been living here a long time. Used to fish and hunt out there where those houses are now. Sometimes the night was so quiet you could hear your heart beating. It was a good feeling. Uh, the sheriff says you're dangerous. Dangerous? They're the ones that are dangerous. Landlord sold the land. Like everything else around here, they want to bulldoze it away. Make room for those silly houses with roofs that leak and foundations that crack. Well, that's progress, Henry. Uh, what can you do? One thing a man can do, threaten him. Tell them to bulldoze me along with the place. Didn't go quietly. Where are you gonna go? I don't know. I never really thought about it before. Mr. Watson, I need a contractor. We're gonna reopen the baits. Sorry, Alex, but I've never done a job that big before. Better get yourself a professional. Well, Mr. Watson, I need someone who can build so that the roofs won't leak and, and the foundation is strong. Uh, I can pay you whatever you think is fair, and you may also live there. Thanks. But I'm too old for sympathy. I need... Someone that I can trust. Someone who who cares about their work. He wasn't loaded anyway. Besides, what good would it do me against all those ghosts of yours? Ain't gonna be no sleazo joint. It's gonna be a refined kind of joint with a cafe and good food. In all my years on the road, I have never heard anything like this. Our beds have been certified by the Association of Hospitals. What happened? Either we had an electric cable, or Mrs. Bates is trying to tell us something. You all right? What is that ambulance? Hey, Henry. Looks like we have all underground cable. Shockwave set off around here. Never found the body. Then you really...
think that this is... None other than the little woman of the house herself, Mrs. Gloria Bates. It's all over now. All right, let's get this bag of bones out of here and over to the cemetery where she belongs. Compliments of the city. And so, Gloria Bates, we commend you to the earth and hope that after all these years, you will at last find peace. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Willie, did you see that lady up there? Who? She was standing up there, dressed in black. A lady in black? Henry, well, you saw her. The sheriff, she, she was standing right over there. Who knows? Maybe it was uh, old Miss Gloria making sure we did things right. Cash outlays, debits, numbers, numbers, numbers. It's all so confusing. Yeah, I know what you'd say if you were here. Alex, if you won't try, you won't succeed. But besides our friendship, I swear I haven't done anything else right in my entire life. Hi, Alex. Just in time to taste my Blue Plague special. Oh, guess what? Since we can't find anybody decent, I've decided to be the chef in the new cafe. Meatloaf a la Bates. Eggs, fresh herbs. It's gonna be a real crowd pleaser. Come on, sit. Taste it. It's not gonna kill you. It's delicious. Well, what's the verdict? Hmm? Meatloaf history? Best you ever had? I think this is a piece of plate. Um, it's good. Uh, you, do you mean that, or are you just saying that to be nice? Hmm, it's good. It's good? What, you think you could be, like, a little more enthusiastic? How about, like, very good? Was that gonna kill you? Boy, it is always the same. You put your heart into something, and what do you get, huh? Bopped over the head. Willie, what would you like me to say? <laughs> that I did a good job, okay? And stop looking at me like I'm nuts. Because if there's anybody who's nuts around here, Alex, it's you. Man, listen, I, I didn't mean it like that, okay? I mean, it's just that, like, most people, they don't go around seeing stuff that's not there. I'm gonna go for a walk. Me and my 
my big mouth. Dear Alex, like everything else, I'm messing up your life too. Good luck, Willie. I'm sorry. I want to apologize. I'm very sorry. Well, I, I really did like the meatloaf, honest. Uh, look, I don't, I don't blame you for being mad at me, but I had problems of my own, so please say that you'll forgive me. Beat it! Well, look, I want you to come back. Willie, I need you. What are you, crazy or something? Get away from me. I'm sorry, I thought you were Willie. Biggers, any friend of hers gotta be a wacko. Hey, I, I didn't mean nothing by it. Look, look, she didn't show up for work this morning, so they called me in to work a double shift. That's all I know. And on my beach day, too. Hey, Alex, Alex, how's the motel coming? Can I give you a lift? Uh, thanks, Mr. Fuller. Uh, Tom, oh, everything's going just great. That's good, that's good. Truth is, I was kind of concerned after you found the old lady. Word is, some of the workers were pretty spooked. You can't blame them. Uh, but according to Henry, we'll definitely be opening in a couple of weeks. Hey, that's terrific. <laughs> Boy, I, I gotta hand it to you. Knowing the history of that place, I'd be out of there at the first full moon. History? You mean history with Norman? Oh, heck no, everybody knows about that. No, I mean with the old man, Jake Bates. Jake Bates? Norman's father. Finding the old lady kind of got me curious, so I did some digging around. Supposedly, she was having a rough time with him. She wanted him home with her at night, but uh, he was always down at the motel, making sure the customers were satisfied, especially the pretty ones. And then one day, he just vanished. She kind of burnt. Went bananas. Every night, poor little Norm screaming in his crib. She's up there in that window of hers in a black dress, like she's in mourning or something, staring down at that vacancy sign as if she was waiting for him to return. But he never did. Did you say a black dress? That's what they say. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the way I felt when I heard it. It's uh, pretty spooky stuff. Really taking shape. It is. Thanks. Thanks for the ride, Tom. Anytime. I always just see him wearing it. Charlie here found him when he was digging. JB, his initials. Not to get you personal like Alex, but uh, <laughs> this place ain't no motel. <laughs> it's a burial ground.
a switch. Gone it. Sensitive. Okay, I was wrong. There, I admitted it, but I'm willing to change. Please, Alex, you're not making this any easier. No, look, it's not you. It's not? It's Mrs. Bates. I saw her in the window. Alex, have you been drinking? At least I thought I did. Jake, too. Jake? Who is Jake? Jake Bates. He was Norman's father. She murdered him 50 years ago. I just saw him. from the window. He was laying right here with a knife in his chest. Yeah, well, he's gone now. Look, why don't I just take you upstairs and we'll put you to bed. We'll talk about all this in the morning. Look, I'm not crazy. And I'm not a child, so stop treating me that way. I saw him. Okay. All right, okay, let's say you saw him. Where is he? Huh? Now, either he was a ghost, he got tired of sitting around the sign all night and he split. Somebody is going to a lot of trouble to frighten you. Listen, my men and I have been all over this place. Now, there's no trace of blood, no footprints except your own. In short, no nothing. Now, unless you know of someone who would want to do something like this, o'clock in the morning, and I'm going home and get some sleep. And I suggest you do the same. Did you get the feeling he didn't believe me? You gotta be kidding. <laughs> he made a joke. It's not bad. I've been hanging around you too much. Yeah. I'm, like, really flattered. No, really, I think it's great, the way you set him up and then you come out with one of these zingers. 
Sounds like me, all right. Guess I'll see you around. Around? Around where? Got this big motel to run. Oh, I got some big mouth. Willie. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And if I did, I'm, I'm very sorry. I need you. Need me? What for? Did you put me on again, Alex? I'm not putting you on. I mean, who else knows how to make me love all the baits? Maybe some other time. No, 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 now. Willie, I haven't exactly had what you might call an overactive social life. There. Is that so bad? Alex, I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> We did it, no man. Wow. You did it, Alex. <laughs> Maybe it's too small, or it has to be bigger, flashier. Bigger, flashier? Something that really gets their attention. Like, I once saw a picture of Las Vegas, you know? Something they can't miss. You want to have gambling? The sign. I'm talking about the sign. We've been open for three hours, not one customer. Tell me about it. I've counted 47 cars go by, not even an almost. Look at it like this. When the first customer comes in, we're really going to be ready for him. Here, have a hot bowl of chicken soup. Calm your nerves. I'm not nervous. Oh, you're not nervous. I'm hysterical. What if no one ever checks in? How will I pay the bank? I'll lose everything. Bank? What's, what's a bank got to do with this? I have to make the first payment by the 25th. The 25th? The 25th is tomorrow. I know. OK. OK, th there's no reason to panic. How much, Alex? How much?
do you gotta come up with? A lot. A lot? What's a lot? What, 500? A thousand? More? Less? What? More. More. More than a thousand. Then two thousand. Come on, Alex. I feel like I'm on a game show. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars? Boy, are you in trouble. How? How, Alex? How could you have made such a crazy deal? Well, I never was real good with numbers. Good? Good? You are a walking financial catastrophe. And this is a complete and total mess. I know. I know, Willie, but I have the strangest feeling that things are going to be OK. How? Look, that's your present. Present? Yeah. It's for the opening. So that you look good. Now I gotta go think. Alex, guess what? I look good? <laughs> Our first customer. Good evening. Can I help you? Hi, yes. Um... I'd like a room, something quiet, away from the action. Well, that should be easy enough. You see, we just opened tonight, and uh, you're our first customer. <laughs> well, that's the way it's been for me lately. My head's in the clouds. I'm trying to finish off a book. Ah, uh, you're a writer? Well, I'm trying, actually. I, I teach aerobics. Ooh, aerobics. I, I saw that once on TV. That's where you put on tights and, and sweat to music. <laughs> that's right. Well, I thought I'd put it all down. You know, everyone's fantasy to be an author. But who knows? Starting's one thing, finishing's another. Oh, I'm sure you can do it if you just give yourself a chance. Yeah. Well, maybe you're right. How about that room, hmm? Oh, all right. Uh, that'll be for one. Yeah, it's just me and my little manuscript. And you'll be staying with us for one evening? Yes. How did you know that? Oh, just a feeling. If you'd be kind enough to sign our guest book here. Good. All right, Miss Peters. This now makes you our first official guest. We hope you enjoy yourself, and if there's anything you need at all, just give a whistle. That's very sweet, but actually all I want right now is to finally get some peace and quiet. <laughs> Good night. Dear. 
Mother. Mmm. Good pie. Mm -hmm. Coffee's good, too. Mm. What? I said I like the pie. He thinks. You know, whatever it is, it must be pretty important. I'm asking you if there's anything I can do to help. Yeah. Henry, that guy who dug up old man Bates. Uh, Charlie Waters. That's his name. What you know about him? Mm, not much. Moved into town by the time we started. Good worker. Why? Well, wasn't he the guy who was trying to get the men to quit and all that? Yeah, a few times. <laughs> Thought the place was haunted. For a while there, I couldn't say I blamed him. But to his credit, he stayed on to the end. Sure did, didn't he? Please try and keep it down. I, I've got a guest in room 12. Who... Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Not bad, huh, Norman? Our first night, and we're booked solid. Dear mother, three marriages, no children. Gray hairs and growing older. Forgive me. I love you, Sally. My sweet Jeffrey, I'll always remember you at the senior prom. You as my knight in shining armor and me as your queen of the hop. On that magical night, everything was perfect. Remember me that way. Love, Sally. Me. What are you doing here? I was taking a bath. Yeah, I can see that. But I think you've got the wrong room. Great song. Dion and the Belmonts, right? But who knows where or when? Room 12. Same as on the door. Geez, I guess you're right. I'm supposed to be in room 11, but funny thing is, it fit. Honest mistake. Sorry. That happens. Hey, this is really gorgeous. Best it cost a fortune. I wore that on my wedding night. Didn't pan out so good, huh? Believe me, happens to the best of us. It's not the end of the world. Everyone gets a second chance. Second? Three husbands, three divorces. So, number four will be lucky. Look, I know it's none of my business, but what I think you need's a little fun. And I'm the fairy princess who can take you there. Take me by the little hand. And no. do like this. I can't. Yes, you can. Just put on your dancing shoes and let's rock and roll. Round and round and round and round we go. 
again. Round and round and round and round we go. Come on, let's do the twist. You can twist, I know you can twist. Just like the old days, that's great. Tell you this punch is great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, the music is really nice. Oh no, I don't belong here. I don't. Yeah? Just give me one good reason. Go ahead. I bet you can. You're all just kids. And so were you once. And it's how you feel that counts. Now come on. We can at least go have a glass of punch. Oh, I'm old enough to be their mother. Don't buy it. Look at you. Look at me. It's like that soap commercial. Guess which one's the daughter? Oh. Hello, Miss <laughs> Peters. Hello. Glad you could join the party. Here, have some punch. It's delish. Yeah. Now, don't go away. I'll be right back with me. See? Now he's got the spirit. Come on, get with it. Life's too short, and the party's getting older with every minute. Hey, I'm a poet, and I didn't know it. Oh, that's better. Okay, I've got someone you just gotta meet. Tony! Hey, stop being a wallflower and get over here! He's just a boy. Hey, don't sweat it. He's really sweet. Sensitive type. Was thinking of becoming a writer. You're gonna love him. Tony, this is my friend Barbara. She's a writer, too. How did you know that? It's my job. Please. To meet you. You too. Well, now that the hard part's over, why don't you ask her to dance? I don't know how. Oh, then she'll teach you. I think I should get back. You two are making this harder than pulling teeth. Now just stay here, okay? Stay. I'll be right back. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Gang, hey! Gang, can I have your attention, please? I got a special request from Tony. To Barbara, queen of the hop. Knuckle sandwiches, you promised me. They're finger sandwiches, and they're over there. All right, all right, all right. What about the punch? Alex, guess what Fuller's home address is. Fuller? What does Fuller have to do with the punch? It's 201 South Windsor, and his phone number is LJ52002. So I called it. He wasn't home. Know who answered? Mrs. Fuller. Wrong. Guess again. I don't know one of his kids. Nope. Give up. Great, fine, please. Come on, Alex, use your head. Charlie Waters, his brother-in-law. How you like them apples? Well, I love my
You really are beautiful. <laughs> oh, I mean it. Queen of the hop. Listen, I've never done this before. It's hard for me. This is ridiculous. I don't know what I'm doing. Why? Why? Look at my face, the lines. You're only a boy. Tony? I should have never said what I did. But it's true. And as much as I wanted you to kiss me, I'm not a 17-year-old girl you met at a party. I'm a grown woman, and, and not what you need. There was something special that I, I saw in your eyes. Yes. For a moment. I forgot who I was. You made me feel... Like I was back in high school. And what's so bad about that? Because I'm not, and I never will be again. Please try to understand. It wasn't you. It was me. I was weak. And you made me feel so good. I feel so cold and alone. Like I was dead. Oh, God. How can you say that? Your whole life is ahead of you. You have so much to look forward to. I only wish that that was true. Believe me, it is. Come on. It's time for you to go back to your friends. That's where you belong. I'll always be grateful to you. Still thinking about doing it, huh? After all that's happened, you can't hide it. I know what you're going to do. What are you doing here? 
How did you get in here? No. You're not losing your mind. You locked it. Stop. You're starting to frighten me. No. I don't want to frighten you. I'm a friend. A friend who doesn't want to see you throw it all away. How do you know what I'm going to do? You've been spying on me. No. Then how can you be so sure? Like I told you before, it's my job. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You want to end it, and I'm here to stop you. You go away. You have no right. No, maybe I don't. But I know what you're going through. You? How could you know? You're only a kid. With your whole life before you. If only that were true. But you, you've got so much. You're young, you're healthy. You have people that care for you, and as long as you have those things, you are a fool to throw them away. Believe me, Sally. You know my real name. Mm -hmm. And I also know what's on the other side. Cold. And that terrible aloneness. That's what Tony said. Then listen to him. And listen to yourself, because you really do have your whole life in front of you. And everything to look forward to. You were eavesdropping. No. He told you. Then how could you... Know all these things? Because, Sally, I committed suicide. Twenty-five years ago, tonight, the night of my senior prom. And we've come here to tell you that it stinks. We? Yeah. Come here. I want to show you something. Terry Miller, in Houston, Texas. I was born April 6, 1943. I took my life July 7th, 1959. Beth Williams, Biloxi, Mississippi. Born September 3rd, 1940. I took my life September 2nd, 1956. Billy Parks, Chicago, Illinois. I took my life December 4th, 1955. Rebecca, Los Angeles, California. I took my life on May 10th, 1962. Tony Scotty. No. Council Bluffs, Iowa. I was born July 14th, 1943. I took my life Christmas Eve. 1959. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
left this house to me. And I'm staying. There's your ghost, Alex. Very clever, you two. Very clever. Where do you think it's gonna get you, huh? Go ahead. Tell the sheriff. Tell him you caught me running around in a Halloween mask. I'll deny it. And who do you think he'll believe? A loser like you, Henry? Or a nut job like little Alex here? It's really her. It's Mrs. Bates. And you will die. No. This is my house. No. None of you are invited. It's him. No, he owns it. No, not me. I'm trying to scare him off. Please, I'm telling you the truth. No! You know, I believe you. Thanks for your confession. Walked right into this whole thing. Right again. And unless you give us a, what do you say, a more reasonable payment schedule, this could just fall into the wrong hands. What do you say? Renegotiation or prison? Yeah. What are they going to do? Throw me in jail for wearing a dress? No. But there is a law against fraud, Tom. And you are dressed for the part. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, look at this. What a great day. Kind of makes you feel glad to be alive. Yeah. Well, thank you and good luck. You really do have a very special place here. I know. And if you ever need a little peace and quiet again, please come back and see us. Right. Nobody ever said life was easy. Then nothing really worth it ever is. But you know, I think with a little luck, we're gonna do okay here. I think Norman would have liked that. Oh, by the way, if you ever need a room, come on by. Can't say for sure what you'll find, but that is what makes the world go round.